At Red Barn, our pet food ingredients work overtime. They aren't just there for show. Dandelion greens work to maintain a healthy digestive system. Salmon oil works to enhance the immune system. Green-lipped mussels work to support joint health. These hard-working ingredients support your dog's active, healthy life. Look at the label. We want you to. Red Barn Naturals Pet Food. Simply the best. Find it in your local pet specialty store. Visit redbarninc.com slash coupon to save a dollar off your first can. Hello and welcome to the Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis Show at every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Cat Cannabis is the international best-selling author of Surviving Cancerland, Intuitive Aspects of Healing, and host of Wicked Housewives on Cape Cod TV Show. Together we will explore cutting-edge insights and philosophies in health, wealth, and relationships. Cat's guests will be ordinary people with extraordinary stories. Now here is your host. Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis. Welcome to the show tonight, everyone. We have got two incredible guests for you. So sit down, get comfortable, get your cup of coffee, because this is going to be a really fantastic show. When you're done listening to it, you're going to feel so good. Our first guest is Tom Bird. And Tom Bird is also a renowned book whisperer, and we're going to ask him about that when he comes on. Um, And we're going to be talking about why he believes that penning a book is one of the fastest and most surefire routes to a higher level of consciousness and enlightenment, which is why he believes so many of us are innately drawn to writing, even writing a book. Based on the thousands of people he has actually taught in his Write Your Best Seller in a Weekend Retreat, Mr. Bird has midwifed his charges through dramatic transformations as they work through their resistance, their fears, beliefs, and, yes, painful memories that come to the foreground when they begin the writing process. So Tom Bird's new book, Write, Write from God, provides insight into this transformative process that provides a much, if not much more, benefit to the writer than it actually does to the reader. So welcome to the show, Tom Bird. Thanks, Kat. It's a pleasure to be here today. Well, we're so glad you're here with us, and we have so many questions for you. And the first one is, tell us about Book Whisperer. I've heard of Horse Whisperer. You know, the horse responds to the whisperer. I've heard of Dog Whisperer, where the dog responds to the whisperer. So tell me how your book responds to a whisperer. Well, in this case, it's the author, me. In this case, in mm-hmm. response to the book, um, I, I serve as a temporary communication tool for the author to hear his or her book coming through me first before they can hear it. So <clears throat> when I work with an author, Kat, uh, we, we, we work under a very strict regimen of relaxation and expression and inspiration, and I'm able to tell the author what he or she needs to do based on what the book is telling me to tell the author to do. That's amazing. You know, so I, I I've gone. So I work on the book. I've gone to a number of of um, uh, of writing conventions, and one of them I went to. The instructor actually had us do meditation to get down deep to pull out that information that was maybe locked away in 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 these deep dark closets but that needed to come out uh in order to not only make the writing better but to heal wounds and and also to be taken to the level of the reader so that they could be helped by the writing and it sounds to me that's a little bit of what you do which I love well, it's, it's something of what I do. It's, it's uh, what you suggested was a complicated version of what I do. I'm a very simple guy. 
Uh, I believe that the reason people want to write is because there are books stuck inside them trying to get out. And I'm not the only person that feels that way. The New York Times came out with an article about six years ago that said 81% of Americans felt they had a book stuck inside them that they needed to get out. And so I help people ease into the real connection with that book. Uh, we assume when someone comes to one of my retreats that there is a book inside them that's dying to come out. And our job is to remove the logical brain, the power of the logical brain, the blockage of the logical brain through relaxation. We put it to sleep, and then the, the author is very easily able to connect with the book. And as long as the author writes fast, they stay in connection with that book the entire time. So the book literally writes itself through the author. So, you know, med meditation is, <clears throat> as far as I'm concerned, I take a very simple man's view toward everything. And uh, meditation is nothing more than quieting yourself and listening. So we quiet the left brain to listen to the book as it comes through. That's what we do. When we stay in that relaxed state the entire time, it's something I can teach someone uh, or my office to do in 10 minutes easily. Uh, it's not something else we studied extensively. It's a returning... Or, Relaxation quiets our minds and returns us to a natural, innate state of communication and inspiration. And that's where the book is housed, in that state. Mm -hmm. So did I understand you correctly when you said that you, you get them to, to write the book fast? It's very important to – well, I'm sure your listeners have been in this state before. I'm sure you have, too, where writing – you're writing something, whether it be a blog or a book or an article or a letter or just journaling, and the writing seems to take over and just pour out of you. When that comes, when that transpires, the author is entering into what we refer to as the author within state. That's a direct communion with a higher self, God, whatever you want to call it, he, she, or it. And it's important to write fast while in that state because it's natural to write fast because of the fact that the faster you write, the less time you have to think. And also the book comes out at an average speed of about 1,500 words per hour when you're in that state. So, again, I, I want to remind the listeners today that we're not actually creating a book. We're releasing a book that's already there. And our reason that we need to release a book is because the book's dying to be released and birthed through us. But the book is already written on the other side of life. And if anyone ever has had a problem with writing in the past, no matter how small or large that the problem has been, there's nothing wrong with the individual in that circumstance. There's something wrong with the system where we've been taught. We've been taught that writing is an intellectual art form only. And certain aspects of it are intellectual by design. But what I've discovered in my 32 years of work with new authors is writing first and foremost is an inspirational or spiritual state. And to ignore the inspirational or spiritual aspects of the book is to be to really get in one's way and be, make writing a, a much harder chore than it needs to be. So if we uh, embrace the fact that writing is an inspirational state by nature, that the book that you want to write is already written inside of you, and we just get out of the way and can commune with that book through writing speed, keep your writing speed up, writing a book can be very simple and easy. You know, 97% um, of the authors that attend my weekend retreats finish their books in a weekend. And they, their average writing speed is 2,500 words per hour. Because, again, when you connect with that spiritual state that I'm referring to called the author within state, the book just pours out of you. So if they write at 2,500 words per hour, and the average length of an American adult first time this book is 35,000 words, it takes between 12 and 14 hours normally for an author to finish a book. That That's amazing. Um you know, so I notice that when I do write, and, and I'm I'm sure I'm not alone, that, yes, yeah, stuff just – once you get into that zone, stuff just starts pouring out, and you really shouldn't stop and start editing then. You just get it all out on paper, almost like uh, free writing, and then later go back and edit. Is Is that what you're saying? You just let it all out. Just let it go. Yeah, let, it, let the book write itself. Let the book write itself mm -hmm. because it's, it's speaking to be expressed and not created. It's already created and already lives on the other side of life. And, you know, I know some, this might sound a little bit outlandish to some people, but, you know, and I, I guess I wouldn't believe this either if I hadn't experienced it over and over and over and over again, year after year after year. 
and I, you know, I've helped tens of tens of thousands of people write their books, but I've never taught them how to write the books. I've only helped them connect with the book that's already written, and the book just writes itself. And if you just write fast and remain in a relaxed state, you're in that author within connected state, and the book literally bursts itself on its own. And just the last two years, we've had 43 number one Amazon bestsellers come through our retreats for mm-hmm. people to use so the tell exact, us your exact retreats. method. Tell us about so them. That, where, where are your retreats? And, and give us a little insight into what you do there, how to help people um, write their books. The retreats are based um, in Sedona, Arizona, in most cases. They're three and a half days in length. They start on a Thursday night and on a Sunday afternoon. And they're divided into three phases. The first phase is the preparatory phase where the author is expected to prepare his or herself for the retreat by performing a variety of exercises we give them to do before the retreat. Then the second phase of the retreat is the writing of their book, which usually takes about two to two and a half days at the retreat. Third phase is revision of your book, which begins immediately after the author has completed his or her book. So our ultimate goal in a weekend retreat cat is to get a book written, get it partially revised, and send the author home with a plan to finish the revision and publication of his or her book after that. Mm-hmm. And do you help them with that publication if they need help? We we certainly do. Um, I have a publishing fulfillment house called Sojourn Publishing, and we can literally help people not only get their books published, but get them published and on bestsellers within a few months after taking a retreat. Mm-hmm. So um, this might be a good time to share with our audience your contact information and how they can contact you, uh, sign up for your retreats, and be a part of Sojourn Publishing if they would like to. So could you share that with us? Sure, Kat. Thanks for asking. Uh, again, my name is Tom Bird. B-I-R-D. You can find more information at me about me at TomBird.com. And the phone number of my office is area code 928-821-6946. Again, that's TomBird.com, 928-821-6946. We'll have approximately, let's see, one, two, three, four, five more retreats in 2016, uh, four of which will be held in Sedona, Arizona. Okay. Wow, that sounds exciting. So now let's get down to the nitty-gritty of your book, Write, which is Write, W-R-I-T-E, and then it's slashed out, <clears throat> Write, R-I-G-H-T, from God. I've been um, kind of promoting the radio show for the past week, and one of the comments I got back was, are you saying that you are speaking from God or we are speaking from God from our pen to God's ears and from God's mouth to our ears? <laughs> and I thought, yeah, no, i got to ask that one on air. So um, would you like to answer their question? Sure, absolutely. I feel that writing the most effective way is a, is a divine spiritual experience that connects us with a much higher source, whether that be God, a higher higher part of ourselves, uh, source, spirit, whatever you want to call it, he, she, or it. But it's definitely an inspirational, spiritual experience, which is one of the things I had not anticipated when I started teaching, but it's something that I've leaned on now for over three decades. I know that when a person pens his or her book using my method, and going through the spiritual front door of the book, that they will have a divine spiritual experience. They're going to go, they're going to receive some form of enlightenment, healing, and inspiration. And the book will, well, I liken the whole process, Kat, to sitting at the foot of God for three and a half days. You know, I mean, if, if we are capable of doing that, and I think we do do that through writing our book. Mm-hmm. Your life will change because you'll connect will connect directly back with the deeper spiritual side of yourself, or connect back directly with God on your own. And things can't help but change because we all of a sudden then begin taking on the viewpoint of ourselves 
that God has of us as opposed to what we have, the living viewpoint we have of ourselves. All the types of things change as a result. And, you know, um, I'll be honest with you, I, I, we've gotten so good at producing books at the retreat that I don't even worry about my office producing your books. What I focus on, what turns me on the most is the spiritual transformations people go through as a result of writing their books at my retreat. So do I think they're connecting directly with God? I think they're connecting directly with the ultimate source, whatever you call it, he's here at when they write their books. Mm -hmm. I believe that's where their books are housed. That's what my experience has shown me. Mm-hmm. So uh, for our listeners, and we do we do have a number of listeners hanging on the line just listening, how can they tell if they have a book inside of them trying to get out? Sure. Good question. Uh, I'll, I'll answer that very slowly so people can write these my response down. Number one, if you've ever entered into the state where your writings just poured out of you, all on its own, you have a book that's stuck inside you. Number two, if people have ever told you, you should write a book, Kat, you should write a book, uh, that comes as a result of people seeing subconsciously inside you the book that exists that you don't have the ability to see. If that happens, you have a book stuck inside you. If, if someone's ever complimented your writing because it touched them so deeply, you have a book stuck inside you. If you're a voracious reader, you just can't put books down. You have a book stuck inside you. And lastly, if you get obsessed with looking at bestseller lists, what books are actually there, which ones are making it on the list and why, you have a book stuck inside you. So there's five distinct symptoms uh, that will tell you if you have a book stuck inside you. Wow, that's amazing. So uh, for those of you listening, I am going to be blogging this show and uh, putting it up on Patheos. I'll also put it on my um, uh, Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis uh, website blog. You can go there and write these down. If if you're running through your house right now looking for a paper and pencil, it's okay. Come back over to the radio show. You can get it off of my blog. So, Tom, um, tell us why our listeners should not feel guilty for not having written a, a book by now. Oh, well, because the time wasn't right. You know, there's a divine timing for everything. Um, I just recently got married about six weeks ago, and I'd been single for 20 years. And, you know, I waited until the right person showed up, and that was divine timing. I'm so glad I did because I'm so happily married. And so most people have a premonition at an early age that they're meant to write a book. A premonition is an understanding of what may be happening in the future. And many people misjudge that premonition as um, a statement that they should be writing a book now. A premonition is mm-hmm. a premonition. If you're listening to this talk show right now, it's probably a reason, because you or someone in your life has a book stuck inside them that they need to get out. This is your divine timing call. That's why you're listening to this radio show right now. So actually, I don't see procrastination as a bad thing. I think procrastination is a good thing because procrastination holds an author at bay until the timing is right. And just like every baby seeks to be born at a specific time, every book seeks to be born at a specific time. So Mm -hmm. if you've been procrastinating, I don't think that you should feel guilt at all. I think you should feel privileged that you've been divinely led to wait until the timing was right. Mm-hmm. Well, well, congratulations on your wedding. I'm sure that uh, the the audience are all clapping. I, I can just kind of spiritually hear them doing that. That's wonderful, and I love your concept of the divine right time. And I have to tell you, if if when I was little, if if my my people or my friends or my family had told me that I was going to write a book and it was going to become a, a, a bestseller and, and an award winning book, I would have laughed at them. That was like the last thing in the world, but like you said, divine intervention, divine right time. And sometimes our purposes and our writing and our books are like kittens. They just choose us, and then there they are. They show up on our doorstep, and we can't turn them away because they won't go away. They're an important part of our life. So, um, our, our, for our, <laughs> thank you. For, for our listeners. I mean, you know, in, your, in your life. Our lives would not be complete 
without the right spouse, without the right family members, or without, without our children. And, and for authors, our lives are not complete until we've written that book. We were born to write. I agree. Absolutely. So um, what would you say is the key to what really makes a book sell and, and the success? Heart. How does that start with the author? Heart, so. Well, it doesn't really start. It starts doesn't really start with the author. It starts with the book, and it starts with the surrender of the author to the book. Because let's say let's let's suspend all disbelief for just a few moments and suggest and accept the suggestion that the book does come from the other side of life, where love is unconditional and pure. If you let that book out of you, it'll be recognized by other people because of the heart. You know, we've all had great teachers who passionately shared their enthusiasm for a topic with us. And whether they were extremely intelligent or not did not deter from the fact that they were affected because of their enthusiasm and heart. We've all had mm -hmm. teachers, too, who were intellectually superior and brilliant, but they didn't allow their heart to be to transpire through the teacher method. And we didn't learn anything but frustration. The key to a successful book is writing it and letting it come through the author's heart. Because our job as authors, our job as authors is to positively influence our readers' lives by making them feel. That's really important. Positively influence their lives by making them feel. And we can, they can only feel if we feel first. So the key to writing a good book just make sure it comes through your heart. If you over edit mm -hmm. it, over intellectualize it, you bore your readers and they'll no matter how valuable the information you're sharing may be, they will not resonate with it because they're not touched. They have to be touched. Mm -hmm. And in the writing process, the first person that has to be touched is the author himself. So every great book has to come through the heart. Because really that's what readers buy is they buy the heart and soul of the author that makes him feel something and transcend the mundane life experience so many of us lead. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? But, yeah, it does. It does. Because, um, you know, it, it just really rings a bell with me because I've often said to to uh, clients who are, that, I'm, that I'm helping write their book, I'll say, yes, I understand that this is a really important um, message that you need to get into the book. And this book, this message is like peas. Nobody likes their peas. They hate their peas. So you're trying to feed them a big spoonful of peas. How can you Trojan horse those peas into your book? How can you mix them in with so many other wonderful things that they don't know they're actually eating those peas? And I think that's kind of what you just said, um, you know, and, and it's so important. You know, if you get too much left brain stuff in there, too many peas, um, you know, people just, they, unless they really love peas, and, and that's a small number of people, believe it or not. That's the first food we spit out of our mouth as a baby, uh, green stuff everywhere. Yes. You know, you've got you've to find a way to make those peas desirable because they're mixed in with everything else that's so wonderful. And, um, you know, we're almost down to like our last five minutes. I can't believe it, Tommy. I mean, this time, this time just flew. This was such a great interview. Um, tell us, leave our listeners uh, with just a couple of, of tips on how they can go uh, sure. from being an a, aspiring writer to a bestseller in just a few months. Well, for a few things, a few things they need to remember. Is number one, readers always buy the messenger before they buy the message. So your voice is actually more important than your message. Number two, if you've been desiring to write or distancing yourself from a desire to write that's been trailing you for a long period of time because you've been met with some type of failure in the past as a writer, keep in mind that there's nothing wrong with you as a writer. There is nothing wrong with you as a writer. This is just something wrong with the system that you've been taught. And if you go beyond that system and reconnect spiritually with your book, everything will work out fine. And the book will literally, last point I want to make, is the book will literally write itself. 
will literally write itself. And so we're releasing books, not creating them. We are releasing books, Mm -hmm. not creating them. I love that. We're releasing books, not creating them. And can you share for us one more time how people who may have tuned in late, uh, we are talking with Tom Bird um, and his fabulous book, Write, Write from God. Uh, Can you share your contact information for any listeners who may have come in late? Sure. Again, my name is Tom Bird, B-I-R-D. My website is TomBird.com. And my phone number, my office is area code 928-821-6946. And if you go to my website, you'll see I give away copies of books, video classes, CDs. This cat has become more than a profession. It has become a ministry. And I feel mm-hmm. I deserve, every author deserves the opportunity that I've experienced myself to be able to write his or her book and have your, his or her life moved as a result of doing that. So I tithe by giving away 10% of my products and time through my website. So I invite people to visit there at any time they'd like. I'd, I'd love to see you at a retreat, by the way, any of you. Mm-hmm. And do you do you have a blog or anything that, that our listeners right now might be able to go to and um, – and uh, uh, see some of, of, of your writing other than your book? Is there anything else that you do that you can share with us? My website is loaded with my writing. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So there's blogs there, there's copies of books, there's excerpts, there's uh, essays, there's all kinds of things on my website. And I, the, they can visit that at tombird.com. And plus there's about 200 video testimonials from people who have visited and attended my retreats. Wow. We have we have like four minutes left, Tom. Can you share a story with us about maybe a writer who came in to your retreat and was saying, I I, I think there's a book in there, but I I just don't know how to start. I don't know what to do. You know, they're they're the this lump of clay and they're asking you to help them mold themselves. Can you share a short little story with us? Sure. A number of years ago, an author by the name of Jan Larkey came in to one of my retreats with an idea for a book that would be based upon flattering a woman's figure. Instead of changing your figure to fit into a certain dress size, her feeling was, you know, let's take the dress size you're in and pick appropriate clothes for you to wear to make you look good and flatter your figure no matter what your weight is. And she had a really great theory. But the thing that was missing from her book cat is mm-hmm. Jan's heart and soul and so she sat down and we wrote the book together and the book came out a number of years ago it was published by Simon Schuster called Flatter Your Figure and she sold over 1.2 million copies and she's changed women's lives exponentially as a result of changing her life first oh what a great story I love that so Tom I just really want to thank you so much for being on the show with us today and sharing all this this great wisdom. And for those of you listening, I am going to be blogging this show. It's going to be on Pathios Blog, which is Above and Beyond Your Five Senses. And it's also going to be on my blog on Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis Blog and Access Your Inner Guide. So thank you again, Tom Bird for being on on the show to share your wisdom with us because it, I know, I can tell by the, the listeners hanging on the line that this is really going to help them. Thank you, Kat. It's been a real pleasure being with you today. Thank you. So don't go away, everyone. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we are going to have an amazing half hour with another author who is going to be talking about teachings from God greeting your soul, and revealing the divine within. And what's amazing about this is that this author was a mere 16 when she began her writing. So don't go away. We're going to be right back. 
Hey, Jenna, have you seen the TV show Wicked Housewives on Cape Cod on Channel 99? OMG, I love that show. It's with Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis. She's an international best-selling author and Lori Boyle, the CEO of Lori Boyle Media. Right. They're hosting a personal development seminar, Retreat for the Soul. It's about your dreams, meditation, healing, and the subconscious mind. Ooh. It sounds fun. And rejuvenating. Let's go. Where do we sign up? Their website, wickedhousewivesoncapecod.com. Did you know that you can use your own radio show to promote your business and become a celebrity in your area or industry? Do you have a great idea for a radio show or a passion that you would like to share with other like-minded people? The Wicked Housewives on Cape Cod Radio and TV hosts Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis and Lori Boyle will show you how. Go to wickedhousewivesoncapecod.com. Do you have a great story to tell or do you want to write your memoir? Best-selling author Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis and Lori Boyle, CEO of Lori Boyle Media, are the hosts of the Wicked Housewives on Cape Cod TV and radio shows. Join their Writer's Workshop Intensive to get writing and get published. Go to wickedhousewivesoncapecod.com. Welcome back, everyone. This is Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis, and this is my cat cannabis show uh, where I, I uh, introduce authors um, and other people making changes in the world, and they're all ordinary people with extraordinary stories. And so our next story is one of those stories where most teenagers worry about wearing the right lip color or following the right YouTube star. 19-year-old Courtney Emmonson is only worried about whether the message she is astonishingly, astonishingly being delivered from the divine are reaching enough people. Because Courtney was a mere 16 when she began following in the footsteps of Esther Hicks and Jane Roberts, Edgar Cayce, and Jay-Z Knight as an extraordinary, powerful channeler. Now, as a ripened 19-year-old and wise beyond her years, she's introducing to the world teachings from God greeting your soul, and revealing the divine within. And this is a book that she's written about loving channeled wisdom brought forth to light mankind's path to the changing times. And we are definitely seeing some changing times. So welcome to the show, Courtney. Courtney, are you there? Oh, yep. I just got unmuted. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Courtney. It's welcome much for to having the me show. On your show. Oh, you're so welcome. So, Courtney, um, your your spiritual life began to awaken at the age of twelve. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I think you know that's when I started to recognize it more as a you know a predominant part of my life. But I really see you know my entire life to be. Um, you know, I've, I've always been seeking. I've always been wondering things, and um, and you know, I, I was always asking these you know questions about God and about you know the universe and and why we're here. I was always asking my parents those things, and and so mm-hmm. I think it was it was kind of just uh, primed within me, you know, from a young age, and and I've been. I'm lucky enough to be in a family that has allowed me to grow in that way. You know, I've I've just been, um, you know, blessed to be in a family that, you know, I've been introduced to um, a lot of materials, a lot of things that have um, helped me to grow my mind and allowed me to stretch my consciousness. And and uh, before I knew it, I was doing the same things as Esther Hicks, and I. I never, I never thought that would be me. I, I thought it was amazing, you know, what they were doing, but I kind of, I just admired from a distance, and um, it didn't really hit me until um, I was 16 years old, and uh, I was, I was meditating one day, and and all of a sudden I, I had a new uh, feeling come over me. It was like a angelic light presence that came through the top of my head, and I. I was amazed. I was it was like this golden liquid light and and just a presence of unconditional love that I had never felt before. It was like um I really physically felt this embrace over my body and I 
started expanding my light. I, I could feel um, just almost bursting through my physical body, and that was um, that was the first time, March 12, 2012, when I realized that um, something wanted to come through. And so I sat down at the computer and I and I opened up a blank Word document and I put my hands down and and this amazing loving energy started to type and communicate words to me in that way. And mm-hmm. um, it was so amazing and and I I realized that, you know, there's so much under the surface that we don't always see. You know, it's our intuition is often at the you know at the back of our mind or at the back of our consciousness, and we don't use all of our tools in our toolbox to really access our um, human our full human potentials. And so, this helped me to learn those things. You know what what are these things that um, what are those tools that I have that I can. Um, utilize to really grow in a personal way and to also help others to grow and to um, find their find their soul's purpose so we're going to come back and talk about those tools in a in a minute but you are talking about uh, basically instead of free writing that many people do in order to connect with their spiritual higher power you're basically doing free typing which is is you know, a sign of the the changing times. Is that right? Yeah, a bit. You know, I think honestly, though, I you know, I've I've been, um, I, I you know, I use the word channeling because it's a way for people to understand um, mm-hmm. what it really is that's coming through. But I've I've you know, kind of stepped away from that term a little bit just because I feel like. Every inspiration, you know, that comes through us, whether it be music or art or writing or poetry or whatever it is, you know, that's the same inspiration. It, it comes from that same place. And so, um, you know, I, you know, I think that, you know, I have many different, um, many different vessels to which I express it, and this is just one of those ways. Mhm. Mhm. So um, you were talking about, I I was reading here that you actually began to practice the ancient art of Qigong. And that's when you started to become aware that something was happening to you. So tell us about, tell us a little bit about uh, what Qigong is for any of our listeners who who don't understand that. And uh, what was it that you became aware of? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I started to learn about Qigong around the age of nine. Um, my mom, my well, both my parents, but mostly my mom. She, we were studying Qigong, and and um, we we found this Qigong master here in Minnesota, who um, founded this amazing place called Spring Forest Qigong. And um, you know, his his motto was a healer in every family in a world without pain. And his presence just completely touched me from the first time I met him when I was nine. We went in for a family appointment, and I felt the energy as he was working on us. I felt this amazing security and love, and just I felt at home there, and and I realized at that point that I wanted to do what he was doing. I wanted to be a healer. I wanted to help people, and so then I, I started to go to workshops with my mom, kind of tag along and learn about it and, um, and you know, continue to, I continue to practice on other people and um, help people to heal. Um, but Qigong, there's many different um, kinds of Qigong. There's thousands of kinds um, specific to different parts of the world, I suppose. But, um, you know, it utilizes the meridian system. And so basically the the goal is to be able to um, utilize our own energy system with the universal energy to help us to move our energy and to um, clear blockages in our body, which, you know, help, basically it, it, it makes us sick or it, it creates imbalances in our body and doesn't allow our energy to flow in the best way it can. And so 
um, through Qigong, we learn how to how to um, use our our hands and our body to merge with the universal energy, and we um, and you know in that space, healing is possible, and healing can happen very very quickly. We're not doing it on our own, and um, so you would run your your, your hands. If, if I was working on someone else, I would run my hands down their body, not touching their body, but you know, maybe a foot away from their body. And I've trained myself so that my hands can pick up energy blockages in their body. And then I will work to um, basically clear those blockages. Um, there's, a few, there's many different techniques that we use, um, but it's all for the purpose of bringing them back in balance. And um, and so their body can you know work at its optimal state. Hmm, that sounds great. Um, and and I know that I've spoken with uh, some other healers, and some of them use Reiki, and they use a, a similar thing where they're they're not actually touching their patients, or they're rather just it's almost like they're they're feeling their aura, you know, that sits off of the body and they work through that that energy feel feel just as as you're talking about with uh with the the qigong so the qigong and so we were talking about tools earlier you introduced tools give us um some of the tools that you use in uh your teachings and healings and in your teachings from god that have been given to you mhm well, I think that, you know, what I've really learned from the the teachings is that that I am my greatest teacher and that everyone that reads the book, they learn that, um, you know, you are your greatest teacher and your greatest healer. And, and so, you know, I think what's been a big practice for me and what I help others with is to be able to um, get really in tune with yourself so that you can – so that you can let your, you know, your personal body and, and um, um, you know, your your higher self guide you every step of the way. So, you know, I, there's not many um, specific tools or practices that are introduced in the book um, for the purpose, you know, of just understanding that every single person is going to be different and that there isn't a 12-step process, if you will, that is going to work for every person. Um, So Mm -hmm. what it really helps you to do is to dive deeper within yourself and to access the wisdom of your body and to, you know, help help that to be your guide and and to um, then, you know, see what works for you. And, And maybe that means, you know, you have to tweak your diet a little bit, or maybe that means um, you don't work out so hard. You know, you do something a little bit more softer. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, for me personally, Qigong has been something that has always resonated with me, and I know that it's, you know, it will continue to resonate with me because I, I you know, my body has always responded in a positive way to it and I've always felt more connected to myself and and um so you know you learn to tune in with your own um guidance system on these things um but in reference to the tools and, and maybe we're talking about the chapter um the golden toolbox that that mm-hmm. chapter is about um utilizing again like I said um the the wisdom that is within our physical bodies. And I learned to really access, you know, a lot of these tools or talents, if you will, that I didn't think that I had. I learned to bring those up to the surface so that I could I could use them to um, help me in my life and in my work. And um, so, you know, my... My intention has always been to follow my soul purpose, to to be as in tune as I can be to my soul purpose. And sometimes that's really frightening for people, myself included, knowing that when you're in the know, <laughs> then, you know, mm-hmm. there's a little bit more um, asked of you, I guess. And so, you know, for me, there's a lot of things that 
I had to get over my fear about and and when I you know continued to check in with my body and I continued to you know ask my body and my my divine my higher self um you know what needs to come out and and what is you know in my subconscious or what lies underneath the surface that I can utilize to help me in the situation to make me more comfortable and to reach more people and once that intention was placed I always got guidance you know I always got the signposts along the way to help me and so then maybe I would you know do something different maybe I would um be guided to you know use a different modality for a little while um and you know maybe I would uh focus on painting or focus on being out in nature more but I think mm-hmm. you know as far as you know spiritual understanding and deepening it's just about being in the moment and learning to stay within your guide within your personal guidance system so that you can be in that flow as much as possible instead of you know trying to um, find all the spiritual teachers out there and, and apply it all at once you know i think it's deeper than mm-hmm. just saying affirmations or um you know eating a vegan diet you know it's deeper than that because every single person is different Mhm. So you're you're talking about guidance and and staying within your guidance and connecting with that guidance. Did you ever get any of that guidance through dreams? Mhm. Definitely. You did? And I continue to. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, when we're in our dream state, you know, the veils come down. The veils come down and we kind of merge more into that non-physical um part of us and um that's where we can receive guidance even um, deeper and everyone does that but i think what's different about about that is we wake up from our dream and and we don't you know many of us don't really um put any significance to it or we don't um you know think about it after we wake up it's just something that happens during the night and then we forget about it but there's a lot of wisdom to dreams and i don't analyze them too much but i definitely you know if it sticks out and i continue to remember it and it keeps coming back in my consciousness then i know that it's a message for me and sometimes you just can't ignore it you know sometimes you feel um you know like it's really really real and sometimes you um have you know visitations with other people um you know for example i i have talked with my grandma a lot recently in the dream state and it's it's always been very real i can tell that it's it's um happening in a different state where my um you know my resistance is down so that i can i can really experience that and how can you give us an example of how a dream with your grandmother um helped you was it a like a precognitive dream was it a dream telling you to do something to make a difference and then when you did it there was the difference in your waking world um for me it was uh, about moving through you know emotions it was about um the illusions of separation after she passed away last year mm-hmm. and um you know i was i was pretty close with her, with my grandma and i experienced the entire process as she was as she was uh transitioning and so after she actually crossed over it was very difficult to not have her there and of course my entire family we were missing her a lot and um so she came to me in a dream state 3 days after she died and she um and she she gave me a message and she said I was just very reflective and she said, "You know, I I wish that I would have used my energy better to communicate with you." And we had this long conversation. That's what stuck out to me. But when I woke up, I remembered that and I thought, "Okay, well that that makes me feel good that she knew what was going on and 
and you know she knew how much we were doing for her and and you know she appreciated it and and that you know in that space of transitioning it can be hard to let go and it can be hard mm-hmm. to know that you're you know you're going to be leaving your family behind but in a sense you know the the bigger part of her knew that we would always be together just in a different way mm-hmm. so and those dreams does she ever brain. help you with your writings i mean when you're sitting at the at the computer and getting ready to type do you always do you ever feel like maybe grandma's there <laughs> helping you also yeah um you know when i was writing this book um it was actually my great my great grandmother that came through for me and she um i don't i haven't i don't think i've talked about this before so this will be this will be interesting. Um, mm-hmm. She she came through actually the the first day that this started coming through, and and um, she told me that she was waiting to um, basically transition into a higher state of um, consciousness, I guess, and um, or a higher plane, and uh, she was she was kind of waiting for me to get to this place where I was ready to um, deepen my spiritual understanding and she was helping me to um, kind of get comfortable with it and and, um, not have fear about it. And she came to me and and she um, showed me many visions. I was sitting there and I I was... um, waiting for some waiting for some writing to come out and and um she showed me many visions and and uh it brought me closer to trusting it brought me closer to um merging with the divine it was kind of like a mediator a presence that i knew and understood and felt comfortable with and so in that sense you know in that instance it really helped me and um not so much anymore I feel my um, family's presence, family that has crossed over, I feel them sometimes. Um, Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think that specific specific experience um, where it was almost like a visitation but I was awake, that really, I think, Mm -hmm. only happened um, in the very beginning. But, so what were one of the visions that she shared with you? Is it anything that you can remember and share with us now? Hmm. It was mostly about, um, you know, I, I, I don't remember specifically anymore because it was four years ago. And, mm-hmm. I, you know, it was one of those things where you go really deep into meditation and, and when you come out you don't really remember it except for what was on mm-hmm. the page. So it's more about, you know, what I wrote down that I remember. But in those beginning, um, you know, in these, those beginning days, I was receiving so much content, and it, it was accelerating so fast that, you know, mm-hmm. I think that experience really only lasted maybe an hour. And then I was, you know, I was I was going deeper and deeper and deeper, and, um you know, by by the first week, I already had 50 pages of information, and um, wow, mm-hmm. and it was mo- it was mostly for my own personal evolution, and I experienced mm-hmm. other states, um, other beings, other places um, that I was tied with in some way. I experienced that this is a parallel reality. Mm-hmm. That everything that is happening here in you know in this um, reality <laughs> um, is, is I actually have you know many other existences that are happening at the same time in this now moment and and it was very interesting and very um, cool for me because I didn't I didn't know that that. Um, that it works that way, <laughs> I didn't understand mm-hmm. because the way that we perceive our life is linearly. We perceive, um, you know, everything on a on a timeline, mm-hmm. and you know that time progresses, and, and it's actually a, it does. A, 
It, it is an illusion. So we're actually down to our last five minutes. Believe it or not, that just went so fast. But can you share with our audience how they can contact you and find your book? Sure. My website is teachingsfromgod.com, and I am, um, I've got a lot of stuff going on there right now. Um, but you can buy the book on there. You can check out my blog and my social media links and some other interviews that I've done and to learn more. And I I love to talk with people. So, you know, if, if any of this, you know, kind of rang true with you, then send me a message on my website, and I would love to, to hear your comments and, and uh, what you got out of it. Well, for those of you listening, I'm going to be blogging this show. And so you can read it on Patheos at Above and Beyond Your Five Senses and also on my blog site, which is Access Your Inner Guide. I want to thank you so much for being on the show with us today, Courtney. Um, And I wish you the best of luck in your writings, and I hope to have you on the show again. Thank you so much for having me. So those of you still listening, uh, next week from 6 to 6.30, we have Dr. Edwige, and she's going to be talking about, no, no, you're not crazy, you're awakened. And then from 6.30 to 7, we have Marie St. Louise, who's going to be talking about RSVPs from heaven. And coming up, In Southern California, you can actually join me live on Thursday, April the 7th, in L.A. at 7901 Melrose Avenue, Suite 204, for SEO Boot Camp. So if you're an author, a writer, or a blogger, and you want to get your message out there into social media, come and check out the boot camp that I'm going to be doing. And on April 8th, the very next day in Venice, at the Mystic Journey Bookstore, which is 1624 Abbott Kenny Boulevard, I'm going to be doing a signing, a book signing for Chicken Soup for the Soul's Dreams and Premonitions. I'm one of the authors in there, and I'm actually going to be doing some of the readings. So join me, and you can find all the information on this if you go to my public Facebook page, my my big page there, Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis, for details and directions and links to all the information. So I want to thank both of my guests today for a wonderful interview and all of you for listening. And I hope I will uh, see you again or hear you again next Wednesday, same time, same place, 6 to 7 p.m., Eastern Standard Time, 3 to 4 Pacific Time. Until then, have a great week. Remember to write down your dreams. You know, they're so important. Both of our our, uh, guests today talked about how important dreams are um, in your writing, in your daily life, in everything that you do. Because as Courtney just said, the veil gets thin when you're in the dreaming world. And I always call it the sacred doorways to heaven through which our spirit guides, our deceased loved ones can come through in visitations in our dreams and give us information for our books, whether it's writing right from God or it is um, any of your type of writing that you're doing or blogging. They're all going to be in a form, if they come through your dreams, they're going to be teachings from God because that's where the information is coming from. And remember, you all have spirit guides and guardian angels. You were born with them. You are their job, and they take that job very seriously. So through meditation and prayer and dreams, you can connect with them for a better, more fulfilled life, and know that you're not down here on this earth plane all by yourself. So until next Wednesday, have a great week, and make, may all of your fabulous dreams come true.
Thank you for tuning in to the Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis Show. If you would like to comment or have an idea for the show or have a question for Kat or one of her guests, please visit her on Facebook at Kathleen O'Keefe Cannabis. This show and previous shows are archived on Blog Talk Radio, accessible from survivingcancerland.com and accessyourinnerguide.com. Join us again next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Until then, have a great week. At age 56, I feel better than ever. I walk eight miles to work, practice yoga, and paddleboard on weekends with my husband. I'm also a GNC store manager. When customers ask how I do it all, I tell them that GNC vitamins and supplements really help. Our formulas are the highest quality, made with some of the best, most effective ingredients, guaranteed. Now, some of GNC's best wellness products are buy one, get one half off. Which ones are right for you? Just ask. We make it simple. Visit GNC or GNC.com for details.